Great, so <coughs> welcome to the next, next Fit Sit class using a stick. Um, so just a reminder, there's a few people in the class just recovering from um, surgery. Um, so always take things easy, never feel you have to do anything. Listen to what's going on in your own, own body and uh, never, never move into pain. When that's, um, um, always be kind to yourself. So please begin by um, coming to sit, if possible, towards the front edge of your chair. And then um, just notice what, if you can, what the shape of your spine is, how you're sensing the spine. So quite often there can be this tendency to roll to the, um, to the back of the sit bones, therefore the spine is rounding. So if that's happening, just think of pushing your lower tummy um, forward and down and you can see how that just helps me to come up onto the middle part of the sit bones. Good. And then um, check that your knees are about hip distance apart and that your heels are more or less underneath the knees. So quite often people will tuck the feet back. So um, feet solidly on the floor, feet underneath the knees. And then um, uh, bring your attention to your right knee and just begin to move the knee a little bit from side to side. So just gently moving the knee from side to side, but feeling how the pressure, the weight underneath the foot, shifts to the little toe side and then to the big toe side. Good. And then pause, bring your attention to your left knee and do a similar movement. So just exploring tilting the knee a little bit from one side to the other and but just noting how the pressure underneath the foot shifts to one side and then the other good and then pause and then please bring your right foot slightly forward of the left and then just see if you can lift the toes and then put them back down so just the right toes lifting, keeping the ball of the foot down and then putting the toes back down. And then once more lifting the toes and then putting them down. And now this time, lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot. Put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So it's toes lifting first, followed by the ball of the foot. Put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. And then lift the front of the foot, so you're keeping the heel down. And then just imagine you're turning um, the dials of a clock with the big toe. So just letting the movement travel freely up into the knee and into the hip joint. Good. And then just reverse the direction of those circles. So still leading with the big toe side of the foot, letting the movement just travel up, in, up through the leg. And then pause, and then this time think it's the little toe side of the foot that's making these circles. So just little toe side making the circles, and then just reverse those circles, still thinking of the little toe side of the foot leading the movement. Good. And then pause, bring the foot back to its standing position, and then just curl the toes under and then just release the toes. So just curling them under and then releasing. Once more, just curling the toes under and then releasing. And then pause, bring your left foot slightly forward and then just lift the toes, keeping the ball of the foot down and then put the toes back down. So just lifting the toes and then putting them back down and then once more just the toes and then putting them back down and now this time lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot see if you can put the ball of the foot down first followed by the toes so it's toes ball of the foot put the ball of the foot down followed by the toes and then once more toes ball of the foot put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. I've got some clicking going on. <laughs> and now lift the front of the foot, keeping the heel down 
and then just think you're making some circles with the big toe leading the movement but allow the movement to freely travel into the knee and into the hip good and then just reverse the direction of those circles we're going to do about five in the other direction and then pause and switch your intention to the little toe side of the foot and think it's the little toe side that's leading the, these circles. Again, after about four or five, then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And then pause, bring the foot back to its sort of standing position and then just curl the left toes under and then just release them. So just scrunching under the toes and then releasing and lengthening and spreading them. Just scrunching under the toes, good, and then releasing them. Now um, imagine there is a grape, a grape underneath your right heel and just think you're squashing the grape down, flattening it into the floor and then release. So you're just pressing down and if you can see me on the screen you'll notice that what actually happens is the right side of the pelvis can just lifts a little bit and the weight shifts over to the left as you squash that grape and then release. So just squashing that grape underneath the right foot just seeing if you can feel this little shift of weight that can occur to the left and then pause and think the grape is underneath the left heel and you squash that grape down and then release so you're pressing the heel down into the floor just think can you allow this little shift of weight to the right and then release and once more squashing down that grape underneath the right heel um, left heel sorry and then release and then alternate pressing down into the right heel release the left heel release once more the right heel release the left heel good release and now see if you can press down both heels together and you'll perhaps feel that creates a little push up through the spine, you may be feeling get taller about half an inch, release, squash down both heels, release, and once more squashing down the heels, good, release. Now pause and think there is a peg, a stick between the big and second toe of your right foot, and then just lift the heel high take it to the outside and put it down and you can see what happens is my knee just tilts a little bit to the inside and then lift the heel high and bring it to the inside and put it down and so the knee goes in the opposite direction so you lift the heel high taking it to the outside and putting it down lifting it high and bringing it to the inside and putting it down so once more lifting it high taking it to the outside and putting it down, lifting it high and bringing it to the inside and putting it down. And then come back to centre, put the peg between the um, big toe or, and second toe of the right foot and then lift, or of the other foot, lift the heel high, take it to the outside and put it down, lift the heel high and bring it to the inside and putting it down. So just going from one side to the other with the heel, each time lifting it high, putting it fully down, but allowing the knee to just tilt like a pendulum in the opposite direction to the movement of the, of the heel. Good. And then come back to centre, have your hands just resting on your thighs, and then just begin to caress um, the right hand down the lower leg and then come back up. So um, uh, you might only want to go an inch or so, that's absolutely fine. Others will be able to go a little bit further, 
down the lower leg and then travel down the outside of the lower leg and then to the inside of the lower leg. Good. And then come back up. And then pause and have the left hand just travelling down the... Uh, sorry, sorry, the other hand travelling down the lower leg, come back up. And then down the outside of the lower leg, come back up. Down the inside of the lower leg, coming back up. And then maybe down the back of the leg, and then coming back up. Good. Now pause. And then um, just, um, if you could just watch me on the screen again. So I'll just turn to the side that you can see. Put one hand on your breastbone and one hand on your lower tummy and then just see if you can allow your back to round so that the distance between those two hands just comes slightly shorter so you feel your back is rounding and then think of pushing out the lower tummy so the distance between the two hands increases slightly Good. Just rest the hands for a moment. Just have a look at the screens. So the reason I've got the two balls, blue and the yellow ball, is just to represent what's happening happening here. Shame I've got um, the blue one because it's not easy to see. So as I round my back, I'm thinking, see, that, so these two balls are coming together. But can you see how my back is rounding behind me? And as the two balls sort of apart from each other there's a gentle extension of the spine so it's rounding and extending but the thing to be careful for of is to keep your shoulder over the hip so if you just again have one hand on the breastbone and one hand on the tummy so and you think you've got two of these balls if that visualization helps you you're just rounding the back and then extending the back so that when you round the back of the two hands just come slightly closer together and then as you extend the back the distance between the two hands just gets slightly further apart good and then pause pause bring your um, left hand underneath the left knee the left thigh or on the knee and bring your right hand behind the back and then just think you're bringing the elbow and the knee slightly towards each other and then you release put the foot back down so what's happening there actually is don't think so much, again if you just want to look at the screen, don't think so much of the elbow, it's really the back rounding that brings those two points closer together and then the back extending that takes them further apart. So um, have the left hand um, behind the back of the left thigh, the right hand behind the back of the head and then just see as you breathe out can you allow the knee and the elbow to come closer together and as you release press down the left heel and think of the elbow going behind you but look towards the elbow so you round the back to allow the elbow and the knee to come towards each other as you lift the foot and then you put the foot down, stamp down into that heel and feel it creates a extension and spiralling in the spine. So once more, elbow and the knee towards each other, letting the back round. And then stamp down the foot as you take the elbow just a little bit behind you, looking at the elbow and then release. So, um, please have your right hand behind the back of the right thigh and the left hand behind the back of the head and see can you allow your back to round so those two imaginary balls are coming closer together as the elbow and the knee come towards each other 
and then stamp the heel down, allow the elbow to travel behind you, looking towards the elbow. So again, the elbow and the knee come towards each other. And then as you release, stamp down the right heel as the elbow spirals behind you. And then once more, elbow and the knee towards each other. And then you stamp down into the right heel as the left elbow travels a little bit behind you. Good. And then release. And now please take hold of your stick. Stick. Okay. And then just have the stick in front of you. It's quite, quite close to you quite close to you, so it's quite, quite, um, it's between the feet, and my hold the stick sort of more or less kind of in line with the top of your breastbone. And then just see, can you round the back again? So imagine those two balls coming closer together. And then uh, think of extending the back to look at the top of the stick. So you round the back, looking at the bottom of the stick, and then you can almost press down into the stick with the hands gently to help you extend the back, looking at the top of the stick. So once more, rounding the back to look at the bottom of the stick, and then extending the back to look at the top of the stick. And then just to remind you, if you bring your attention to your feet, we can connect the feet, the legs, into this movement. So that when, I, when you round the back, it's almost as if you're pushing the feet forward. They're not actually moving, but your sense of pushing the floor forward. And when you extend the back, it's as though you're dragging the feet on the floor back towards you. So you push the floor forwards as you round the back. And then as you extend the back, think of dragging the heels back towards you to look at the top of the stick. Now let's just do one more like that, rounding the back to look at the bottom of the stick. And then think of the heels dragging back as you look to the top of the stick. Good. Now, just pause and have a rest for a moment. I'll just show you this because, again, we've got a new person in the class. So we're going to turn that basic ex rounding and extension into a more dynamic pattern. So I'm going to, again, just let me show you this. We're going to extend the back and then you reach forward with the stick so you stay looking at the top of the stick and then once you've reached forward as far as you comfortably can you bring the head between the upper arms and then I think of pulling in the tummy to curl back till my shoulders come over my hips see how I'm rounded when I come back and then I extend and go forward. Good. So um, let's start to do that together. So you start with the stick in front of you. Both hands are on the stick. And then think you extend. So you, first of all, you drag the heels back, looking at the top of the stick. And then you reach forward, still arching to reach forward, looking at the top of the stick. And then release the head, the ears between the upper arms. Push the foot, the feet forward as you curl back, curl back. So you arrive back in this curled position and then you extend the back. So once more going forward forward in an arch, release the head, bring the ears between the upper arms and then push through the feet, pull in the tummy to come back in that rounded position 
and then um, release. So just put your stick down for a second and I just want to show you, show you something to see if I can make that um, um, clear. So uh, my draft excluder, imagine that is your, your spine. What we're doing there is we're arching, going forward, and then to come back, it's really trying to initiate the coming back from the pelvis so that you come back um, vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae till your shoulders come over the hips and then you extend the back to go forward. And as you're coming back, you really want to keep reaching through the arms and the stick. So can you see, if you can do that, it means that we're opening out the vertebrae at the back of the spine. Then we extend and go forward. Um, the reason I'm just spending a lot of time on this is I was working with a gentleman with a bad back, very tight back, um, yesterday and the day before. And what his habit of doing, it was, it was very difficult for him to get this tummy work, the control of the lower pelvis. What he was doing was he was going forward, got back a little bit, and then tried to come back with the head. Can you see how that's jamming into my spine? So just take your time. We're just going to do a few more of these. Um, uh, arching and curling waves. So you arch first, drag the heels back, reach the stick forward. So you're looking at the top of the stick. And now really think the stick is lingering. You're still reaching through the stick as you try and pull in the lower tummy, the ribs. So you come back in that rounded position and then you extend the spine to go forward once more. And really try and get the curling of the lower back, lower back, lower back. So you come back curled and then you extend the spine. And then um, it makes a real difference to sort of releasing those lower back muscles. And many, many people lower back muscles are very, very tight. So um, you can feel the kind of abdominal work that's uh, happening. Now pause. So now we're going to reverse that pattern. So I start by curling. Keep curled as I reach forward. Once I reach my forward, I think of pushing out the tummy extend and look at the top of the stick and then I come back in an arch shoulders over the hips and then you round first reach forward extend push out the tummy so you extend to look at the top of the stick and you come back in that arch good and then you round to go forward again, arch the back to come back, good. And then pause, pause, well done everyone, see everyone doing that very, very caref carefully, good. Now keep the stick in your left hand, hand and have the stick somewhere near your left foot, just somewhere near your left foot. And hold the stick as comfortably high as you can without straining the shoulder. And so I'm going to reach to the corner of my room over there to the left. So you're reaching the stick, looking at the top of the stick, and then you come back. So not to the side, it's not to the side, I'm reaching away from me on a diagonal to the corner of my room and then coming back. So just get used to, you're just reaching on a diagonal 
and notice how your right buttock tends to become light. So your right buttock is sort of lifting as you reach away from the floor and then come back. Good. And then pause for a moment and you probably have guessed what's coming. So I'll just show you again. So I reach, so effectively I've extended. Now to come back, to come back, I want to keep the stick lingering. So I pull in the lower tummy to initiate the coming back from the pelvis. So you reach, looking to the top of the stick, pull in the lower tummy to bring that right sitting bone down first and then you stack up. Let's do one more like that, so you're reaching, and then see, can you let the stick linger, so it's the pelt, the movement in the pelvis is bringing you back to centre. Good. Now pause, bring the stick still in the left hand, sorry, uh, yeah, the left hand, bring it near the right foot, or the right thigh. So now I'm reaching to the far corner in the um, other side of my room and just reach, looking towards the top of the stick, so extending, and then to come back, see if you can initiate the coming in, coming back from the pulling in of the tummy to come back up to sitting. So you're reaching forward, so this time it's the left sitting bone that's lifting, and you pull in the tummy, rounding the back to come back up to sitting. So once more, reaching forward, allowing your left sitting bone to lift, and you pull in the tummy to come back up to sitting. Once you've done that last one, pause, bring the stick back into the middle, still in the left hand. Again, if you want to have a look, I'll just show you. So this time you're reaching the stick forward, straight forward, allowing the left sitting bone to lift. And then to come back again, I'm letting the stick linger, so my arm is long, to come back. So you're reaching straight forward, letting the left sitting bone lift, pull in the tummy to bring yourself back upright. Once more, reaching straight forward, letting that left sitting bone lift, pull in the tummy to come back up to sitting. Good. Well done everyone, super. Now pause and have the stick in the right hand. And have it near the right foot. Again, a comfortable grip on the stick as high as you can comfortably manage without strain in the, in the arm or the shoulder. And again, I'm reaching to that far corner of my room, letting the left sitting bone lift. And again, can you let the stick linger so you're pulling in the tummy to come back up to sitting. So once more, reaching to the corner, letting your left sitting bone lift. Pull in the tummy to come back up to sitting. Good. Let's do one more. Reaching. Good. Looking to the top of the stick. And again, allow the stick to linger. So you're pulling in the tummy to come back up to sitting. Fantastic, everyone. Keep the stick in the right hand, but bring it near the left. So it's in line kind of with the left thigh. And so now I'm reaching to the opposite corner of my room. So you're reaching, looking towards the top of the stick, letting your right sitting bone lift. Pull in the lower tummy to bring yourself upright. 
once more reaching, looking to the top of the stick, pull in the tummy to come back up to upright. And then one more time, reaching. In your, as much as possible, you're letting the stick linger. So you're really kind of um, dragging yourself or pulling yourself back from the pelvis. Come back to centre. Now pause. Bring the stick into the middle, still in your right hand. And then begin to reach straight forward allowing your right sitting bone to lift and then to come back initiate the coming back from the pelvis so you're letting your right sitting bone lift initiate the coming back from the pelvis Good. and then once more letting your right sitting bone lift Good and then initiating the coming back from the pelvis. Good. Now pause, bring both hands onto the stick. Again, um, I'll just show you, show you this again, um, just have a little rest for a moment. So now we're going to imagine we're stirring a great big pot of paella, but it's the same um, principle we've been working. So as I reach out, I'm looking to the top of the stick as it goes round, so I'm arching. But as soon as I begin to close the gap, I'm letting the arms linger, I'm pulling in the tummy to come back. So I'll just show you that from the side. So I'm arching, arching to go round, and then I let the stick linger linger to bring myself back. So let's let's make some paella. So have the hands on the stick again as comfortably high as you can and then begin to reach out to so looking to the top of the stick to come back, pull in the tummy. Reaching round, looking to the top of the stick until you begin to come back. Once more, reaching round, good, pulling in the tummy to come back. And then reverse the direction of the paella. Again, reverse, tummy in to come back. Reaching out and round, good, tummy in to come back, good. And once more, reaching out and round, tummy in to come back. Now. Keep the stick in your left hand, bring the right hand onto the thigh, and then just pick a place a little bit over to the right for the bottom of the stick. Could be anywhere, but let's all just go a little bit off centre to the right. And now let's make this one handed piler. So you again reaching out, pulling in the tummy to come back, good, and do three in one direction, good, and then reverse the direction of the paella, of the stirring. So really, these circles are being traced because of how you're moving your centre. Good. And then pause, switch arms, pick again a du another um, place for the bottom of the stick, and then begin to um, stir some paella. That's it. So every different position, different place for the bottom of the stick means we're just putting slightly different forces through the spine and then just reverse the direction, direction of these circles. Super. Good. Come back to centre. Now, Keep the stick in your um, left hand, but this time have it somewhere to the side. So um, it's kind of between my hip and my knee. It's not behind me. Um, equally, it's not too far forward. So just somewhere to the side. And then have your uh, hand as comfortably high on the stick again as you can manage without strain. 
just widen the feet and knees a little bit to give you more sense of balance. And then just begin to reach the stick out to the side and then come back. Okay. So you're reaching and you can feel oh, your weight is coming on to the left side and then you come back. So just feel first of all, we're just not worrying too much about how we're doing this, just reaching out to the side so you feel your right sitting bone becomes light. Good. And then um, just notice, is your head tending to follow the stick? And in fact, you can let it do a few movements, letting the head follow the stick. Good. And then come back. And now the next time, see if instead of the head following the stick, you can think of your right ear tilting towards your um, uh, right shoulder and then come back. So letting the right ear tilt towards the right shoulder and then come back. So again, just pause, have a rest for a moment. I'm just going to use my draft excluder again. So when, I, when my head follows the stick, this is more what's happening to the spine. Can you see it's kind of more tilting? But when I, when I think of tilting my head to the right shoulder, see it's more of a side bending in the spine. And that's what we're trying to, to look for. So we get a, a side bending action. So when you reach the stick out to the left, think of your right ear tilting towards your right shoulder and then come back. Okay. Once more. Good. And back. And now the next time, trying to keep the head more or less in the middle, look to the right and come back. So you're reaching out to the left but looking to the right and come back and reaching out to the left but looking to the right and then come back. Now the next time stay looking forward, reach out to the left and just see if you can stay there. So my weight is or your weight is on the left sit bone, the left sit bone, the head is more or less in the centre but your right buttock is light could you begin to think of your right knee moving forward and back? So it's just going straight forward and straight back. The foot stays in place. And of course, to move the knee forward and back, it means the right hand side of the pelvis has to turn forward and then back. Good. Pause and rest. For a moment. So if you think about what we've been doing with the tummy, arching and curling, what would make sense if you were to reach out again to the left to bring the weight onto the left sit bone? As I reach the knee forward, I'm thinking of slightly pushing out the tummy as I bring the knee back, pulling in the tummy. We're pushing out, pulling in to include more of the movement of the spine in the movement of the knee. Good. Pause, come back to centre. Bring the stick onto your other side Good. and um, have the stick as comfortably high as you can. And then just begin to reach out to the right without worrying too much about what's happening to the spine. So just find out, can you let your weight confidently come onto the right hand side so that your left buttock becomes light. And just do a few movements, letting your head follow the arm or the stick. Good. Just feel, can you feel that's a different shape in the spine? And then the next time, think of your left ear tilting towards your left shoulder. So 
we've brought the weight onto the right hand side, but more through side bending. So just that's it, take your time, there's no, no hurry. Good. And then pause, and then the next time you reach out, turn the head to look to the right, left, sorry, and then come back. So you're reaching, turning the head to look to the left, and then come back, good. And once more, turning the head to look to the left, good, come back. And now stay looking forward, bring the weight onto the right hand side, and this time, so the left sitting bone is light, can you move the knee forward and back, the left knee forward and back, keeping the foot in place and feel, ah, oh, there's this, can you just allow the lower tummy to push out slightly and pull in to include um, a movement in the more, an arching and the um, flexion and extension in the spine as part of this. Good. Now come back to centre. Bring the stick back into the middle. So it's quite close to you this time, the stick. And the stick is just representing your midline. It's giving you a clue as to your midline, your no tip of the nose, the middle of the breastbone, the navel, the pubic bone are all sort of in line with the stick. And then just see, can you bring your weight onto the left sit bone and then onto the right sit bone. So if you see me on the screen, I'm hoping most of my nose is hidden by the stick. So I'm not tilting the head keeping the head more or less in the middle, but our s the spine is side bending from side to side to shift weight. Something we need for walking, going up and down stairs, this ability to transfer weight from one sit bone to the other. Good. Pause. Take the stick a little bit further away from you this time. Make sure your heels are sort of more or less underneath the knees. And then, um, if, again, if you want to have a look, just have a look first. I'm going to ask you to arch first. Reach the stick forward. Forward until you feel the weight coming into the feet and then come back to sitting. So just let me explain. Um, here my weight is in my sitting bones on the seat of the chair and I know that because I can easily lift the feet. There's no weight in the feet. So my weight is in the chair and I reach forward, arching the spine, until my weight comes into the feet. And I know that because I can lift the bottom an inch or so off the chair. But then to come back, do you remember I think of pulling in that lower tummy to come back up to sitting. Now, the trick here Again, if you just have a look at the screen. So I was working with a gentleman who was trying to get out of a chair like this. I was he was really, really struggling. His back was rounded and he, and he was doing this, trying, having to try and push through his arms. But if this, if you, what has to happen is to come up effortlessly. If you look at my head, my head is this side of the line of the stick, my head has to come far enough forward and up in order for the weight to come into the feet. If I'm back here, there's no real chance without struggle. So the, um, have the stick in front of you again, the hands comfortably high on the stick. 
and then begin to gently arch the spine, reach forward looking at the top of the stick till you feel the weight comes into the feet and your bottom can become light and then to come back pull in that lower tummy to come back up to sitting. But um, look, don't look at the floor though the head, the head has to go forward and up. If your eyes are looking down it will affect the use of the neck. So um, as you reach forward keep looking above your hands, 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 hands and pay attention to the weight when it goes into the feet suddenly the bottom can become light and then you allow the weight to come back into the seat of the chair. That's all we're doing at the moment. Just, just seeing if we can identify that moment when the weight comes into the feet. What you have to do, but you have to look forward, look forward. That's it. Looking forward. See, so can you find the moment when the weight comes into the feet and then come back? Pause, just have a rest for a moment. Okay, so one of the things that will affect this, of course, is what's happening to your knees. If your knees tend to do this, drop in to try and hold yourself, hold yourself up, it really that um, is a recipe for um, uh, making your knees worse. So you have to. I think of pushing the floor forward, forward, coming forward, and then coming, coming up to standing. And then to go back, I think of my head going forward, forward, to find the seat of the chair, and then I bring the weight back into the seat of the chair. So let's just have a have a go at, go at that. But don't if you don't want to do the whole thing. If you just want to work on exploring the transfer of weight into the feet, it's fine. So think about your knees, your use of the legs. Begin by pushing the feet forward. See how that helps to do something in the hip joints and begin to reach forward, reach forward, reach forward till you've gone far enough forward that the weight comes into the feet and then your bottom comes straight forward. And then to go back, come forward with the stick and the head, looking towards the hands. You'll find the chair and then you can come back up to sitting on the seat of the chair. Let's do that once more. So again, you, I'll show you from the side. So you gen gently arch, begin to reach forward. Allow your head to come in front of the knees till you feel the weight is in the feet. And then you bring your bottom straight forward to stand. And when you come to stand, just give the bottom an extra squeeze. And then to go back, Think not of going down, go forward with the head and the arms and the stick, stick, till you find ah, the bottom touches lightly and then you transfer weight into the seat of the chair. One more time, go forward, 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 bottom comes straight forward, give it an extra squeeze. Good. And then to go down, to go back, again, go forward with the head. Look forward, look forward, look forward, look forward. See if you can find the seat of the chair. And then you transfer weight into the seat. Good. Now, who'd have thought we've effectively just done um, about 12, 10 or 12 squats, squats there to... Um, um, but hopefully you, you begin to get the feeling that coming up is an, an effortless transference of weight and coming back down, again, 
going forward to come back down. So you could, if you wanted to, you'd do it almost all day because you've got the organisation of the movement rather than lo using lots of extra uh, and unnecessary muscles to do it. But a lot, a lot will depend on how you're using the feet and knees. If you grip the knees together, it's really um, not going to be as effective. Now, just pause, have your hands on your thighs, and then just see, can you press into your right foot to bring the weight onto the left side, keeping the head more or less in the middle, and then onto the right hand side. Good. So we're just practicing our ability to side bend from one side to the other. Good. And then see, can you turn this into a walk? So you bring the weight onto the left side, take your right knee back, keep it back, bring the weight onto two sit bones, transfer the weight onto the right side, take the left knee back. So you're just walking back on the seat of the chair till you arrive at the back. And then see, can you begin to walk forward on the seat of the chair through this transference of weight. Okay, um, uh, I'll end the lesson there. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you took things easy. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, but um, thank you very much, everybody.